Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh episode of Learning Java. Today we'll be learning about the switch case statement. So what is the switch case statement? Switch case statement it is like the if construct statement but it is a faster alternative to the if construct and it can be used to test lesser complicated statements as compared to the if statement. Switch statement can be used to make menu driven programs, which is very useful when you're writing big applications. So let's see how switch statement works. So let's say I want to write a code in which I want to give the user two options. One option uh, will be to accept a number and then to add 100 to it. And the second option option will be to accept a number and then to subtract 100 from it. So I want to perform one of these operations and the user can select which operation to perform. So let's see how this code will work. So first, since we need to accept the values from the user, I have already written, I have already called the import java.util.star package. I have called a class switch case and this is the main method. So scanner sc is equal to new scanner system dot in. This is my scanner and now I'll accept a value from the user. So I'll tell the user to enter a number. So this is going to be printed and the value which the number ent enters is going to be stored in the variable n. In then is equal to sc dot next n. So the value which the user enters will be stored in the variable n. So now we need to take the choice from the user whether he need, wants to subtract 100 from the number or add 100 from the number. So you're going to give him both the options and choose which option he wants and then perform the specific operation. So first we ask the user system dot out dot print ln choose one which is add 100 or two which is subtract 100. So we print this and the user is going to write either one or two. So int and we're going to accept this value in the variable choice. So int choice is equal to new is equal to sc dot next int. So now whatever the user enters one or two will be stored in the variable choice. Now let's say we were doing the if construct over here. So we would write something like if choice equals equals one, then we'll write the code in these brackets. Uh, else if choice equals equals two, and then we'll do the minus hundred. And else if the user enters something in wrong, like zero or three, four, five, six, seven or something, then we would just type okay wrong value. So that's how we would write the if construct. Now to use the switch construct, which is much preferred if you want a menu driven program like this, we can do something like switch. So once I write switch, there's this, this is the basic uh, algorithm code type of thing for the switch case statement. So we write switch and then we write a variable or a literal or a or a variable or a literal in the switch brackets over here in the parentheses. So what is this variable? Now this variable comes inside the switch statement. So once the code goes inside the switch statements, it's going to check with the variable choice. So whatever number we enter, whatever variable we enter in these parentheses is going to be checked for the condition. So now there comes the disadvantage of a switch statement is that we can have only one variable. We cannot have multiple variables and this cannot be a Boolean expression. So a Boolean expression is something like we cannot write something like ch is equal to equal zero something. We only need, we can only write a little or a variable. So let's see how this works. Then you'll be able to understand this in more depth. So switch choice. Now this choice variable, we need to check what value it is. So we can write case. This is where the case part of the switch comes. Case one. Now, why do we write this colon? Why do we write one? Why do we write case? So case is just the normal statement which you have to write. There's no going past that. One is the value which the which we need to check. So let's say I'll give you a quick dry run kind of stuff for the score. So the user is going to enter choice example. He enters one. 
So the switch and switch knows that to check the variable choice. So then it's going to go to the first case. So in this case, this is the first case. So it's going to check case one. So this one is being referred to the variable choice. So if choice is equal to one, then whatever is inside this case will be executed. So let's say if this choice variable was a string, let's just assume that this was a string. Then how do we write this? Then if it's a string, we write with double quotes. So we write case one and it's in double quotes because it's a string. Same case applies for character. If it's a character, we check it this way. We put it in these single quotes because that's how you initialize a variable. So this case it's in, so we don't need to do all of that. Uh, okay. So, and also notice that everything is in small because Java is case sensitive. So switch choice case one. So if choice is equal to one, so if choice is equal to one, then we need to add hundred to the number. So the number is N, N is equal to N plus 100. Now that's only, that's it for the case. And yeah, that's it. And no, there's a colon, not a semicolon. So that's it for case one. We can have multiple statements. Okay, let's even just system dot out dot print ln print. It's going to print n. So let's just print n. Now, what do we do? This first case is over. Where do we put the second case? Where do we put the third case? What happens? So to put the second case, you can just start by writing case two. So if choice is equal to two, then whatever is under case two is going to be executed. Now, one more thing to note. This case doesn't have any brackets like this because you know in the if construct and even in this switch there are brackets but this case doesn't have brackets and it shouldn't have brackets otherwise the compiler will give an error. So how will Java know when they when it needs to stop executing the case? It won't stop itself. So to tell Java to stop executing the particular case you have to put the keyword break. What I'll explain break in a few more minutes. First, I'll just write this entire code. So case two is equal to n is equal to n minus 100. And then we just print this and we can write break. So I'll give you a quick dry run once again for a recall. System.out.println, uh, the user is going to enter either one or two. So user enters choice. So choice will have either one or two. So if choice is equal to one or if choice is equal to one, then this is going to be executed. If choice equals two, then this will be executed. So that's it for the code. There's nothing else to it. So if choice is equal to one, then this will be executed. Choice equal to two, then this entire segment will be executed. So let's, there's an extra bracket. Okay, fine, fine. There's another error coming. Let's see. Okay, there's another bracket. Okay, now we compile the thing and let's go void main and let's enter a number. Let's say we enter the number 20 and let's say we add 100. So output comes 120. So we know the code works. Now let's say I do void main and the number 20 once again and I enter something like 5. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? This is because there's no D, uh, else statement. In the if statement, there's an optional else statement which you can put in the if construct. So if this happens, else if this happens, and if none of those uh, if statements and else if statements are satisfied, then the else is executed. So is there some else kind of statement in the switch that if the user enters something which is not in the case for each variable, then what will be executed? So just like the else statement in if, we have the default statement in switch. So default is the same as else. So if choice is not equal to one, it's gonna to go to this. Choice is not equal to two, then default means else if none of these uh, uh, statements are satisfied, then it's going to do whatever you want it to do. So in this case, print ln invalid entry. So this default is the else statement. And if you want, go ahead, put a break. So now we'll see. So if I enter number, let's say, uh, let's say 20. And if I put seven, 
then it's going to go to else statement because it's neither one neither two and it's going to print invalid entry now what does the break statement do so to understand the break statement let me remove all the breaks and let's just see what happens so i moved all the breaks there's not a single break let's see what the output will be so i enter the number 20 and i select one look what the output is 120 20 invalid entry why what's that what happened let's try once again so let's say we enter the number 20 and you select two now the output is negative 80 and invalid entry so what's going on over here let me explain so when we enter one what happened is a choice has one now and it's going to check if choice is equal to one which it is so it's gonna do n is equal to n plus 100 so we enter 20 so n becomes 120 so over here n is 120 and it's gonna print n to 120 over here so it has print 120 over here so that's what we saw but in this case we didn't put the break if we put the break then only this would be printed in this case what happens since there's no break there's something called a fall through which occurs fall through is something in which if there's no a break statement between the cases then everything gets printed below that particular case till a break statement is encountered so this is called a fall through even and even not the statement is false so now java will see no break it'll ignore this and it'll go to this so this is what happens so it'll ignore this case too because there's no break and it's going to go to this so n is equal to n minus 100 so n is equal to 120 and minus 100 be 20 and it's going to print 20 now and again there's no break so it's going to go to the default statement now and it's going to print invalid entry so this is what a fall through is so if i had multiple case statements like many case statements it'll keep continuing till a break is encountered so what break does is Break by definition transfers the flow of control to the line of code outside the switch statement. So if you focus on the definition and I put a break here. So break will transfer the control to the line of code outside the switch statement. So as soon as this break is encountered, which will only be encountered if choice is equal to one. So if user enters one, this break will be encountered after these two are executed. As soon as this break will encounter is encountered the control will be transferred to the line of code outside the body of the switch statement so it's going to transfer the control outside these curly brackets wherever these end so they end here so the control will be transferred to this line and after this line the thing just closes so nothing just happens after that so let's say our code continued after this uh break let's say we put something like break has been executed so when the this break is encountered the control will be transferred to this line which is exactly the one after the body of the switch state let's take another example let's say the user enters two so choice is going to be checked with one okay it's not equal to one it's going to go here directly so it's going to check if choice is equal to two which it is so it's going to go print do this operation then print this and then it will see no break so it'll print default also but we don't want that so we put a break and then this break will be encountered and again the control will be transferred to this end now you might have a question this default statement do you need a break over here let's see so let's say the user enters number three so choice is equal to three case uh, choice is not equal to one so it'll ignore all of this choice is not equal to two it'll ignore all of this then it'll come here default which is like the else statement so it's going to print this and there's no break over here. So we'll go to the next case, but there is no next case. So technically there will be no fall through and the uh, transfer line of code will be transferred to this statement because that's the only thing after the default statement. So you don't need to put a break after the final statement in the switch, which is generally default. Also, another point to note is that the default statement can be in the middle, in the beginning, but an ideal programmer will have it at the end. And also, if you have a case statement at the end, uh, again, you don't need a break, but then you need a break in the default statement if it's in the middle or somewhere. 
One thing to note here is that this fall through which occurs in the absence of a break in a switch case statement can also be used to advantage. Let's say in some particular codes, which is very rare, this fall through can be used. I would recommend you all try writing some codes in which this fall through can be used. So that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching. And if you have any queries, doubts or suggestions, you can mail me. My email will be in the description down below. And thanks again for watching.